It just means more, but it doesn't make more. But should it? Hey everyone, welcome to the Voice of College Football. Appreciate you stopping by for the best discussion, debate, and analysis based on your participation. We appreciate the comments down below. Guess what else we appreciate? Your contributions. Please hit the like button and subscribe right here at the Voice of College Football in the midst of one of our many off-season projects, breaking down network TV ratings. Please check out the Big Ten, the ACC, and the Big 12. And yes, let me address a few things before we dive into the SEC. One would be that people are commenting down below, and rightfully so, Mark, it matters when these games kick off. It actually doesn't as much as you might think. Primetime is given a lot of prestige, but with the Fox noon kickoff and even the kickoffs on ESPN and ABC proving to be just as lucrative and just as watched, if not more than primetime, the whole aura around primetime is way overrated. We will look at that. And then also people bring up the networks. Yes, more people are going to watch on Fox than they will on FS1. The same exact game. Yes, we understand that. More people will watch on ABC than ESPN. Some of that is just simply because there's greater distribution. Other is because there is a perceived status to a particular game if it's on a network. Believe it or not, you guys are hardcore college football fans. You're going to watch the games that you want. However, there's are folks out there that just watch a few hours on Saturday afternoon. And if it's on Fox or ABC, they just watch whatever football game is presented to them there. So, yes, that is a factor. We have not forgotten about that. We've had a lot of people criticize the videos. Not a lot. Most of you very appreciative, and we appreciate that. But people commenting about that, and rightfully so. But check out last year's videos. We pulled it all together at the end. We have that perspective, believe me. All right. Also, let's take into consideration, we do not have CBS Sportsnet. We do not have SEC or ACC network ratings. Uh, I've got uh, some access that I can find to SEC network ratings that are unofficial. Now, the ACC network. Now, back when I was in the industry, I'm guessing this is still the rule. I haven't been out of the industry for too long, that there were not ratings available for five years. So the ACC network, I believe, kicked off in 2019. I believe it was 2019. Yes. Therefore, there would still not be official ratings released to the public. Uh, with the SEC starting in 2014, I don't know why there aren't those ratings. Let's keep a few things in mind. If we do find some unofficial ratings, and if you have found them, please send them in. Let me know where I can find ACC, SEC network ratings. Uh, let's keep in mind that the distribution, the subscription rate for the SEC network, when it launched back in 2014, was equal to ESPN2. ESPN pushed it heavily, and that launch was extremely successful. Not so much for the ACC. I don't know what the current numbers are, but we know with ESPN subscription rate falling, meaning that at its peak, out of about 113 or 14 million TV homes in America, that ESPN eclipsed 100 million at one point, not for a long, long stretch of time, but over 100 million homes. That figures in the low to mid 70s right now. So they have lost about 20 or 25 percent of its audience. Therefore, the SEC network ratings, you would think just by sheer numbers, couldn't be as good as they were five, six, seven years ago. And the same with the ACC network just from 2019 until now. Uh, that those numbers would suffer. And of course, the ACC is not as popular as the SEC, so we can we can equate that the network is, isn't going to do as well, even if it had the same distribution. All right, let's get to the SEC ratings. And again, please like the video and share these videos out on social media. Week one in the SEC, of course, big non-conference games highlighted by this one. LSU Florida State drew over 9 million viewers. That's one of the top rated games of the season. Let's also keep in mind that it was a standalone game on Monday night, meaning it had no competition. So 90-some percent of these games have competition. The LSU-Florida State matchup, the number's impressive, but let's keep in mind, nobody else could watch any other game. So if you're watching college football on that night, you had to watch the Bayou Bengals and the Seminoles. South Carolina, North Carolina, week one. 
That was the seventh highest rated game of the week at over 3 million views, as well as we're going to include Texas, Oklahoma to get some perspective. Yes, there have been comments out there about Texas, Oklahoma and the impact. We cannot make a direct correlation. There's just absolutely no way to do that. Uh, Texas, Oklahoma in the Big 12 played a lot of Fox games, FS1 games. Also, they've got the ESPN contract, but now moving to uh, the SEC, they will play exclusively on uh, all the ESPN networks, including ABC. So the direct correlation doesn't hold up. And of course, the competition, the popularity of the brands that Texas and Oklahoma will be playing is going up as well. But this is giving context to a certain extent on the numbers that we saw from last year. Texas Rice still pulled an impressive number considering the opponent for the Longhorns at over 3 million viewers. Florida, Utah played on a Thursday night and only had one major matchup uh, in competition. That was Nebraska and Minnesota. Tennessee, Virginia, not a good football game, 49-13, but still drew a nice number. And down at the bottom, Texas A&M and New Mexico at 794,000. Therefore, the SEC pulled four of the top 10 games, five of the top 12 and eight of the top 21. And you see that Texas A&M New Mexico number doesn't look good, but considering the level of opponent, and if you look at the other games from the other conferences in like games, that's a pretty strong number. And let's go to week two. And once again, the SEC pulls in the best number. And uh, going forward in 2024, this will be a conference game. Of course, Bama and Texas, two of the biggest brands in college football, 8.76 million. Texas A&M and Miami, Almost 5 million less views, but still a top three game, which magnifies how big Bama, Texas is. Auburn Cow played on the West Coast. You got to think that Auburn was drawing most of those fans at 2.23 million, but that played on the West Coast at 1030 at night. So that's an impressive number as well. Ole Miss and Tulane at 1.4 million as the SEC drew four of the top 11 out of 28 games rated in week two. Week three, Georgia-South Carolina turned out to be a better football game than anticipated. South Carolina had an 11-point lead. So out of 30 games rated in week three, this was the number two ranked game in terms of viewership. Florida-Tennessee right behind as a primetime game. Bama and USF, of course, the Bulls gave Bama a scare with a 3-3 game in the fourth quarter, and that drew almost 5 million viewers on ABC. LSU Mississippi State on ESPN at noon at 2.8 million. That's a nice number before Mississippi State uh, tanked the rest of the season. Arkansas BYU also eclipsed 1 million views. Got to mention this one. Kentucky and Akron, 115,000 people watched on ESPNU. That is going to be one of the lowest numbers for an SEC team. On to week four, and the top three games of the week were in other conferences. Bama Old Miss at 4.6 million. Rated number four out of 32 games total. Arkansas and LSU chimed in at 2.4 million. Auburn, Texas A&M, over 2 million views as well as the SEC grabbed three of the top nine spots. Georgia UAB, of course, not much of a football game. Mizzou and Memphis playing on ESPNU actually was a good game as the Tigers turned out to have a really good team, meaning the Mizzou Tigers. But they only won this game by a touchdown as the 30th rated game out of 32 on the week. Let's go to week five, 28 games rated Georgia Auburn number two at 6.4 million. LSU and Ole Miss played a barn burner on ESPN over a hundred points scored. 3.7 million people watched it. Bama Mississippi state much, not much of a game. 3.3 million. There we see Texas. There we see Oklahoma playing Iowa state. Uh, surprisingly low number for a conference game uh, with Oklahoma involved at uh, just about 800,000 folks. Florida, Kentucky played a noon ESPN game at 2.3 million. On to week six, and this is what Oklahoma and Texas bring to the SEC. When the two get together, the highest rated game of the week, and that should continue as SEC members, you would think, with that SEC audience tuning in more so than they would uh, for an out-of-conference game. 7.8 million. So the top rated game of the week out of 25. Bama, Texas A&M was number two right behind with uh, just about 600,000 less viewers, Georgia, Kentucky was a blowout. And that's another factor in these ratings. Although people typically stick around with the game that they want to watch, even though it's a bad game. I don't do that, but it's been proven that most people do that. That really bad football games that were originally supposed to be good matchups 
still hold a rating. There is obviously some impact by a good game versus a bad game. Kentucky and Georgia 51-13, a uh, primetime game on ESPN, drew a lot of viewers initially, but I'm sure that dropped off in the second half. Had it been a good game, I'm sure the number would have been decidedly better. It was at 3.19 million, LSU and Mizzou at 2.3 million. That a really good football game. So only four rated games because of the SEC network situation out of 25, but the SEC delivers four of the top nine games of the week. The SEC with another four out of 10 in terms of the top 10 games of the week in week seven, 35 rated overall, Texas A&M and Tennessee topped the list on CBS at 4.38 million. Bama, Arkansas, 3.4. Georgia Vandy, top 2 million. And so did Auburn and LSU, 2.16 mil. That 2022 Bama-Tennessee matchup in Knoxville, where Tennessee finally broke a 15-game losing streak to the Tide, 52-49. Last second field goal. Incredible game, incredible scene. Drew one of the highest ratings of the year. But anytime Bama-Tennessee get together, even though the balls were basically out of it at this point. They still played a good first half, had Bama on the ropes, and delivered this rating. Eight million views, number two game of the week. Oklahoma UCF, surprisingly, two plus million as a UCF took Oklahoma down to a two-point conversion, so a good game may have drawn more people late. Ole Miss and Auburn at 1.8 million. Arkansas, Mississippi State, despite a sluggish 7-3 game and two teams that were out of it, drew... Over a million views. Texas Houston at 3 million as well uh, out of the Big 12. Week 9, 35 games rated, including the top game of the week. Georgia, Florida, not surprisingly. Almost 6 million people watched it. Oklahoma, Kansas was a really good game, and Kansas pulled off the upset. 3.6 million watched it. Tennessee, Kentucky, 2.5 million. Texas, BYU, just about the same number. South Carolina, Texas A&M. Drew almost 2 million, so the SEC accounted for, with the extension of the teams from the Big 12, Texas and Oklahoma, five of the top 10. So in terms of 2023, three of the top 10, and by extension again, five of 10. 38 games rated in Week 10, including this gigantic matchup, which over the past 15 years or so has turned into one of the premier matchups in college football in regards to the standings, but even more so in terms of popular brands getting together and drawing tons of viewers. This one ranks consistently year to year. Bama LSU, top game of the week, 8.8 .8 million, one of the most watched games in college football all season. Georgia Mizzou at 7 million. Nice figure there. We know that it had a lot to do with Georgia. It was on CBS at 3.30. Bama LSU was the primetime game and Mizzou playing better football, and it was a decent game. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, the last time Bedlam gets together in quite some time, 3.7 million, Texas, Kansas State. That game went to overtime. Almost 3 million people watched it, and there we see a couple other SEC games that uh, were pretty competitive games, really competitive. I watched Texas A&M and Ole Miss. They went down to a last-second field goal, 1.8 million. Arkansas, Florida also went down to the wire at over a million. And keep in mind, this Arkansas-Florida game at number 15 for the week out of 38 and over a million doesn't look impressive on the surface, but number one, neither team's that good. And it's not anywhere close to a given that a game on ESPN2 is going to draw over 1 million views. On to week 11 with 37 games. And Georgia Ole Miss tops... In the SEC at 4.8 million, not much of a game as Georgia rolled in the second half. Tennessee, Mizzou at 3.6 million, a top five game. Texas TCU, that was a close game, surprisingly. So that had to draw in some late viewers. Bama, Kentucky was a blowout, but still a top 10 game at 2.7 million at noon on ESPN. Oklahoma, West Virginia was a complete route, 2.3 million. And then we've got Mississippi State, Texas A&M. And that was an ESPNU game at 409,000. Georgia, Tennessee, one of those traditional SEC matchups that people show up for. 5.7 million. That was the top rated game of week 12. Texas, Iowa State's there at 2.5 million. Florida, Mizzou. And there you see on down the line, Oklahoma, BYU was a close game unexpectedly. 
And then a couple out of conference games where the SEC brings in the numbers, especially LSU and Georgia State. Nobody else playing Georgia State is going to come anywhere close to 741,000 people watching as the 19th rated game out of 35. Nobody watched Arkansas and FIU. Rivalry weekend in college football. More people watch games. That's all there is to it. You're going to see the biggest numbers overall in week 13. Auburn, Bama, nine plus million. Now keep in mind that I believe this was the second highest rated game of the entire season, but still 10 million plus behind Ohio State, Michigan on the same weekend. Georgia, Georgia Tech at five and a half million. Florida, Florida State over five million as well. Mizzou and Arkansas, this number impresses me because the game was a blowout. Mizzou crushed Arkansas. But people are used to watching Friday football, Black Friday. Uh, There was competition in regards to other games being played. Uh, Not as many as on a Saturday, but from Mizzou and Arkansas, with Arkansas being a bad football team that finished 4-8, and drawing 4 million views, there you go. That's the SEC, that's Friday, that's CBS, that's all those things put together despite a lousy game and one of the two teams being a bad football team. Ole Miss and Mississippi State, I've said it a zillion times, a stroke of genius starting back in 1998 that these two teams would get together on Thanksgiving and on rivalry weekend when they're getting crushed by all the big national rivalries that they would separate themselves, get their own time slot on Thanksgiving night, and it has worked out well. 2.2 million people watched it despite the NFL being on at the same time. Oklahoma TCU also eclipsed 2 million, as did LSU and Texas A&M. The Big Ten's elite Drew the most viewers for any game. So Ohio State, Michigan, nothing can touch it. 19 plus million. Ohio State, Penn State, almost 10 million. Penn State, Michigan, plus 9 million. But overall, the SEC has more depth. More depth in the conference on the field, but also in terms of eyeballs being drawn to games. The top 10 is an impressive list. And also consider some of the games that we went through that didn't make the top 10 that would make the top 10, would shoot, would make the top three or four in the Big 12 or the ACC or what was the Pac-12 and would certainly be ranking higher in the Big 10. Let's look at the numbers. Bama Auburn, nine plus million. Bama LSU, Bama Texas, Bama Tennessee. See a theme? Oklahoma, Texas will bring that value to the SEC starting in 2024. Bama Texas A&M, number six rated game In the SEC, these are just conference games. So, for example, Florida State, LSU, not included. Then we see a lot of Georgia when they took on Mizzou and Auburn and Tennessee and Florida. Those were some of the highest rated games of the year. So, Bama, Georgia, and then if they're playing a semi-impressive opponent or it's a rivalry game, of course, people are watching. So, the 10th rated game in the SEC, well over 5 million people. And then we will see, based on our next chart and one of my favorites, here we go. We see that not all those 5 million viewership games could make the top 10. Why? Because 12 games reached over 5 million views. So out of 56 conference games, and of course, a ton of them being played on the SEC network, That those are the games that we're missing here. Those are the only games because we've got CBS, ESPN, ESPN2, ESPNU covered, ABC as well. 38 rated here. So the other 18 on the SEC network. We've got the Alabama-Auburn game, 9 plus million. Then we've got the other games that we noted, Bama-LSU, Bama-Texas, Bama-Tennessee. So Bama consisted of the top four spots all over, 8 million. Then we see a trickle down from there. Then we see, in comparison with the Big Ten, and we'll size this up later, that there's greater high-end depth with the SEC drawing games plus 6 million, plus 5 million, plus 4 million. Then once we get to the 3 million figure, the Big Ten catches up again and has a ton of games in the 3 and 2 million categories where the other conferences don't even come close. And yes, out of 38 conference games rated, yes, every game went over a million views from the SEC. That is unmatched. On the surface, it appears as though the SEC has the best numbers overall. A lot of depth there from this conference on the field, and it translates to eyeballs. People care about the SEC. They watch the games. Our work is not done, though. Let's look at network. Let's look at time slot. 
all the things that you will see on our 2022 video that you can check out down below. We will wrap it up right here at the Voice of College Football. Appreciate you being here, and we will see you next time.